So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all the dignitaries across the world who have tuned into this live session. The future of maritime education can we shift to a hybrid model? Uh, we hope all of you are doing safe and well during these tough times. My name is Keetan Vakil. I'm the business development manager at HIMT in India, and it's an absolute privilege and honor for me to be moderating this session with the stalwarts of the industry. We have with us Captain Pradeep Chavla, the chairman of Global Met and Managing Director, QHSC and Training, Anglo Eastern Ship Management Limited. Next, we have Dr. Sajid Hussain, Commandant at the Bangladesh Maritime Academy. We also have Mr. Bart De Jong, Consul General at Kingdom of Netherlands, and from my alma mater, WMU, the President of the World Maritime University, Dr. Cleopatra Dombia Henry. A warm welcome to all the speakers. The format of the session would be that each of the guests would share their views for about 10 minutes. And upon completion of the same, we would have a question and, the se question and answer session. To make the session more interactive, uh, we would suggest that the audience across the world can post their comments on the video wall. The evolution of maritime education and training has undoubtedly been the fastest over the last couple of years. COVID-19 has accelerated that evolution and has caused a paradigm shift in the methodology of course delivery and student learning at maritime academies across the world. With the emergence of new technologies like augmented reality, virtual reality, cloud-based simulators, 360-degree learning management systems, video conferencing solutions like Zoom or Microsoft Teams, uh, which can replicate a physical classroom, the scope of lecture delivery and increasing student interactions are unparalleled when compared to any other industry. Now, without further ado, let's hear from each of our distinguished speakers. Our first speaker requires no introduction. The president of WMU, Dr. Cleopatra, is one of the most dynamic people I have met. She's also called the mother of MLC. The floor is all yours, ma'am. Thank you very much. And uh, to our panel members as well uh, on the screen. So thank you so much. Uh, certainly, the, this topic and the issues that it's addressing are uh, quite critical today, particularly for the maritime industry. I would say that the sudden on, onslaught of the and if not, I call it an onslaught because it really is, it has been and still continues to be, COVID-19 uh, has had a huge impact on everybody around the world. It's created unprecedented disruptions to global maritime education and training, and that is no doubt. Many MET institutions, and I use this term MET to refer specifically to seafarer education and training, around the world were forced to switch to emergency remote learning as a means to continue providing um, maritime education. Maritime educators, they took swift action, and I'm very proud of them, to shift their traditionally face-to-face -face courses online and students largely accustomed to traditional forms of learning quickly had to adapt to the newer online modalities for learning and assessment. The unexpected and the unplanned shift in operations demonstrated, for the most part, agility and innovation in responding to the challenges experienced by MET institutions in the face of the pandemic. In this sense, the pandemic functioned as an accelerator of online teaching approaches and hybrid learning. Even WMU had to shift in this respect particularly in cases where prior to the pandemic, there may have been reluctance to migrate to online classes. Now, as MET educators begin to consider the educational possibilities beyond COVID, the discussion focuses not on a return to normal, but instead on interrogating the different online, hybrid and blended learning approaches to determine what the new normal will look like. What is in my view abundantly clear is that some of the technology mediated learning is here to stay, whether we like it or not. In the initial stages of the transition from face-to-face -to, -face to online teaching, MET institutions did not have the opportunity to systematically plan to adapt to the new set of teaching 
and learning modalities. Most educators transferred their classes online with little or no training in technological and digital uh, ped pedagogic skills and often without access to supporting infrastructure or technological support. Nevertheless, the adoption of online teaching strategies and technologies was largely successful in maintaining academic continuity, preventing MIT institutions from closing and students from completely halting their academic progress and their career progression. In their efforts to fill the educational gap that was created by the pandemic, MET institutions developed digital competencies and enhanced their pedagogical skills. And MET institutions also realized the potential to leverage lessons learned to develop their own online learning capabilities into new learning modules and models, including hybrid and blended learning. The COVID-19 pandemic as a case study for how MET institutions can provide more flexible learning. Experiences for, and in fact, through that experiences for students by using remote learning technologies. As a result, they are now better positioned in my view to create more flexible and personalized learning environments in order to better meet the needs of students. The challenge now is to successfully embed new and enhanced digital education models into maritime education and training by properly targeted research, reflection, and refining and institution institutionalizing instructional innovations created during the pandemic. Maritime education providers should interrogate the pedagogies of traditional face-to-face -face, as well as both synchronous and asynchronous online lessons in order to determine which modalities are best suited to the particular course objectives and the learning outcomes that we need to deliver. The COVID experience has shown that a lot more subjects can be delivered online than has been initially, initially estimated. However, a full online approach is restricted in maritime education and training, given its high level of practical work that is indispensable. A hybrid approach might be the most appropriate in that context, since not all maritime subjects are currently compatible with digital learning. In particular, practical skills and the courses that are required uh, with dedicated facilities in place, such as bridge or engine simulators and firefighting labs. Even here, it is the case that much more of such practical subjects are finding expression in online and virtual worlds using new digital technologies and virtual learning environments, such as cloud-based simulation. Nevertheless, there is currently a decent amount of practical work that is still required for maritime education and training, including onboard training. Courses such as bridge resource management that require authentic physical as well as verbal interaction and observation among learners are also more difficult to conduct in an online setting. A critical issue therefore, to all that we should always consider is the importance of student interaction and community building through the, le le through the learner-centered collaborative learning, which is widely accepted to be necessary for learning of soft skills, such as leadership, problem solving, and critical thinking. The advantages and disadvantages of each of these modalities should be evaluated with emphasis on achieving the proper student learning outcomes, which, optimize, which while optimizing the flexibility that we need in order to improve equitable access to learning resources. Online learning creates educational opportunities that are more flexible, 
in terms of time and geographical constraints, as well as cost efficiency by reducing the need to travel and accommodation. Like now we are having this, in this incredible hybrid mode. Such flexibility and adaptability have the potential to democratize maritime education, providing opportunities for a wide range of learners, including higher numbers of women and girls, and by attracting those who would not be able to participate in traditional learning. Thus, online courses may allow MET institutions to appeal to and to educate a more diverse student population while enhancing learners' independence. COVID-19 has transformed maritime education and training by accelerating digital transformation, but it has also exposed previously unacknowledged gaps and inequalities that exist. When considering online and hybrid education approaches in MET institutions, it is critical to recognize the existence of digital inequality, particularly in remote and socio-economically disadvantaged areas, as well as, as well as for less developed countries, and how such inequality affects groups particularly vulnerable to digital discrimination, including women and mature learners. Lack of access to digital services, adequate software and sufficient bandwidth not only creates a digital divide, but also interferes with students' ability to access online courses and complete assignments. Inability to access high-speed internet and technological tools is a serious barrier to effective online learning. In countries where we have high rates of digital poverty, underdeveloped electronic communications infrastructure, and unreliable power grids, the COVID-19 pandemic has forced METIs, that's smart academic institutions, to close their doors and students to forfeit their studies, setting, setting back much needed capacity building. The MET institutions and all stakeholders have a role to play, a vital one, in ensuring that the digital transformation of maritime education is equitable, is inclusive, and leaves no student behind. <clears throat> this is crucial for the success and sustainability of online and hybrid learning in MET institutions. Hybrid learning, and blended learning are not just a new normal, but also a new imperative for universities to become future-proof. Maritime education and training institutions that embrace the new opportunities from the challenges faced are more likely to build resilience for future possible crises. The post-pandemic period will be the time for METs to reflect on their experience, to critically assess the best delivery methods and technologies for curriculum delivery based on proper research, develop policies and procedures for online learning and invest in staff training, very importantly, and professional development in order to enhance digital pedagogic competencies that support student learning. MET institutions will need to revisit their respective missions, their academic and their business models, and their commitment to quality education. Reflect on what has been learned from the pandemic and decide on what requires adjustment, restructuring, and or reinvention moving forward. I'll stop here and allow my colleagues to continue to the exchange on the issues that we are all addressing today. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for your excellent speech. You have always been at the helm of maritime industry and I'm sure audience would have had a lot of takeaways from your presentation. As you've rightly said, yes, COVID-19 has completely changed maritime education and training for 
uh, seafarers and uh, the Indian administration also had swiftly moved into the online mode of uh, training, which was one of the four, uh, forefronts uh, in the world. And uh, having been to WMU, even WMU has been following that for the last couple of years, having a blended mode of training. So WMU, yes, will uh, be at the forefront of the hybrid uh, teaching and learning uh, for uh, the future. Our next speaker is Dr. Sajid Hussain. Dr. Hussain is a commandant at the Bangladesh Maritime Academy. Welcome, sir. You are welcome to so greetings from Bangladesh Marine Academy to the organizers of Maritime Shi Conference 2021 and at the moment the panelists in this room. In the introduction and by our respected President Cleo, we already received the words on this subject. I would try to highlight some of the areas quickly within a few minutes and for that I will be using a PowerPoint presentation. I think uh, you can see my screen. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. So at the moment, we can see the image for a second that maritime industry is moving through a screen of online. And it is a, it's a very nice time. And I would like to point out, <coughs> mention here that we feel lucky that our Bangladesh Marine Academy is also one of the sponsors. So one line, in the forthcoming future, maritime e-learning will be directly embedded in our everyday life. How? It started with the evolution of internet which provided limitless ocean of knowledge and it totally changed the approach of teaching and learning where any student or learner enjoys spontaneous opportunity of management of learning means full freedom in their hands. It's something like this that knowledge was on a two-dimensional book or board, but now it is coming from all directions. At the conclusion, within few minutes time, I would try myself to have a visionary voyage where we will be reaching or imagining university-less invisible learning centers around you. It started like this. Three centuries ago, Isaac Newton was sitting on the seashore and he tried his knowledgeable, most knowledgeable life searching for knowledge. Anyway, it was the commencement of intuition for learning. How it has been changed? Educational paradigm shift. The instructor was there and the learners were around him. It was all instructors game. And now the learner is at the center and you can see that all electronic, instead of live, live instructor, all the electronically live instructors, including the real one around a learner. And by the end of 20th century, the science has unlocked secrets of atom, unravelled molecules of life and created electronic computer internet. At that time, possibly, they also didn't think that within only few years time, the whole 
mankind would be transforming into a digital civilization. It got accelerated by the creation of World Wide Web and that gave birth of e-learning. If we spotlight on e-learning, it's all computer, online, mobile phones, or blended. And already our life is full of all these things, the list of media, internet, internet, multimedia, so long. Our life has been totally changed from morning to night. I will draw your attention on the first lines of the, both the tables whether we are transforming from four year degree to 40 year degree means you will be learning throughout your life this degree is in fact would not be necessary degree means end of studies and 40 year degree means lifelong learning obviously there is advantages of e-learning at the same time disadvantages but it has been proved duly if we see all these advantages, then we will definitely accept that advantages are much, much more than disadvantages. Full freedom in a world and disadvantages that lack of personal contact. It's a matter of research that the teacher students physical seeing that is it is, it is putting a learner in a disadvantageous position or not. But as I said, the positive sides are more. Now, if we come to our maritime education, we are running time out of time. Maritime education and general education are different. One is knowledge attainment, another one is capacity to apply the knowledge, acquired knowledge into workplace. That's why maritime education is always said as maritime education and training. Now e-learning into maritime education, well, spontaneously mariners, we are already students of distance learning. We are engaged in workplace or in our cabins, we are busy with preparing for COC exams. Therefore, a seafarer remains a full-time learner. E-learning, in fact, is a live media of learning. A mariner is always a learner at sea, always away from land. Books are dry pages, but e-learning contents are live. E-learning, in fact, an intelligent solution at sea. It's a good fit for the maritime industry because the offices loaded with the IMO regulatory instruments is very easy for them to organize classes or distance education for seafarers out at sea. Already there are world leading MET service providers, sorry, e-learning MET service providers, undoubtedly World Maritime University is a leading one. Maritime learning, e-learning is tied and tuned, so therefore future is being changed. I'm cutting short. Future is knocking in fact. Knocking with a demand of live book, paving the path of lifelong continuous learning. As I mentioned, we will would not be learning uh, running for static certificates anymore. Most likely the future e-learning will be flowing or floating everywhere, even on our spectacles. Live maritime education, it is truly there that the maritime education is a competence-based one, therefore it is already one step ahead in way of e-learning. COC needs revalidation, therefore a mariner remains live throughout professional life and therefore as it goes <coughs> last line the senior most seafarers are already spontaneously on board as live teachers it's time to future man is moving from
earth to moon to Mars to sun. If you do not live in the future today, you will be living in the past tomorrow. Albert Einstein said, your imagination is a preview of coming attractions. If we like to imagine the hundred years ahead, we have to look back during last, the changes took place in last hundred years, there will be ten times changes will be there in the coming hundred years. Future learning and teaching would be a spontaneously gained. Learning would really be an enjoyable part of our life. Invisible learning centers around you, as I mentioned at the beginning that initially universities or schools are inside homes where learners and teachers used to live. In the future, universities will be inside human's life, invisible, in your hand, mobile phone, other equipment, on your spectacles. And therefore, formal universities would not exist at all in the form of today's campus within concrete infrastructure. Let's fly to e-future for e-learning. Thanks indeed for your attention. All images are collected. Thank you indeed. Thank you so much for the informative and an interesting presentation, sir. And thank you for explaining the paradigm shift from an in instructor-centric to a learner-centric. And yes, the positives of online are more. Now the seafarers could complete the e-learning modules uh, when, they're, uh, when they're on board the vessel and then just come back to the shore just for completing the practical elements. And thank you for providing a holistic view of uh, e-learning and elaborating on the invisible learning centers. Our next speaker for the session is Captain Pradeep Chavla. Captain Chavla is a chairman of Global Met and the managing director of uh, QHSE and tra uh, training Anglo Eastern Ship Management Limited. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Kirtan, and sorry for being late. As you know, I was on the other panel for similar discussions. Uh, I do have a presentation which I will try to share now. I'm speaking from a hotel room in Lisbon. Uh, so let me see if this technology works well from here. Okay, are you able to see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, then I guess everything is fine. Uh, so thank you very much for considering me worthy for this panel. And it's good to see your friends, uh, Dr. Cleopatra. We haven't met in a long time, but we should be traveling again soon. I did come to Europe, but then with the COVID in Germany, et cetera, can't travel. And I'm stuck here to go back to Hong Kong. So yeah, so without uh, wasting time, let's get on with what I have to say and then I'm, I'll be open for questions. So future of maritime education is a hybrid model possible or not? Let me try and see if I can uh, get this, yeah. Okay, so the fact is that since the time that I have joined C in 1974, our world has changed. The top row is the kind of ships that I sailed on. Uh, well, the first one on the left is actually before my time. That was just about being scrapped or recycled when I came out to sea in the 70s, the midship accommodation derricks kind of ship. And then by the time I left sea, that was the kind of control rooms that we were having. So the world has changed around us. What's more important, I think, is that our workforce is changing. Uh, I won't bother you with the definitions about which year to which year is Gen X and millennials, et cetera, because I assume everybody already knows that. But the fact is that in another three years, 75% of the shipping workforce are going to be millennials. So now, why is this important in our discussion today? I think because the qualities of millennials, which have been driven more by the change in the society, the change in technology that is happening around our lives has affected the way they have grown up. They all love technology. We all know that from our teenage children. We do know that they love their video games and they are audiovisual learners. 
We do know that they absorb a lot of content from blogs and social media and Instagram and Twitter and LinkedIn and you know Snapchat, Snapchat and there must be others which I'm not aware of. Um, they are have this quality of not wanting to just obey like it was the culture in the past that your parents or your teachers were never to be disobeyed. The younger generation rightfully likes to question why about doing something before you tell them on how to do something. And another important part is that the span of attention, and this is from the Static Brain Research Institute, and I don't know the validity of the research except that I picked it up off the internet, but it says that the average human attention span is down to 8.25 seconds. And I think I would like to believe this to happen because lots of parents will tell us that if you need the attention of your teenager child, it's better to text him at the dining table than to try talking to him. So this is something that we need to keep in mind. And we need to understand that this generation would like to see instant gratification. They are used to their likes, their ha-has, and they interact a lot through this medium. <clears throat> and this is important in understanding the future of maritime education. In terms of gender diversity, we haven't succeeded well in our industry at the moment, and we, it's 1.2% women only. And there are a whole lot of issues about why women don't want to join C. There is maybe a bit of discrimination. Families do not encourage girls to go out to sea in most of the cruise supplying nations. There may be harassment on board. And it's a fact that at the moment it's a male dominated industry. And little things like the size of the boiler suits or the shoes kind of stuff is evident that there is lack of understanding on how to make our ships more friendly for other genders. Uh, I think it is changing. These are just a few snapshots of people and now we have our first chief officer and our first chief engineer, uh, females, and it is increasing. It's still a tiny bit of our percentage is not even one at the moment but we are pretty trying pretty hard to get more people, women to come out to sea. Uh, it is important because I'll mention about the future of seafaring skills that why women are more um, easy, will find it easier to come out to the maritime profession in the future. So the fact is that it is time to redesign how we teach and also what we teach. We all do know that the STCW is up for revision and hopefully this time it will be a major revision and not minor tweaking of the tables. Uh, we do expect as Global Met and IMU are taking part in this, we do expect that we should be able to bring in a lot of blended learning and a lot of other new things into the hybrid model of teaching into STCW. So, but it is time to do that. But before we get into the thing about what is the right model of teaching, I think it is important for us to accept that the goal is to ensure that we have competent seafarers. The methodology used is only the means to reach the goal. So while some countries will be ahead of the others in terms of adopting new technologies, it is not that you cannot teach without the internet or without e-learning or without gaming apps or augmented reality or virtual reality. The mix will happen in the future that it will be a combination of a lot of these things. Uh, we'll move away purely from classroom training to e-learning is already pretty much prevalent. Uh, the virtual reality, augmented reality and gaming apps, and these are examples from Anglo Eastern screens. Um, so I'm not trying to do a plug out here, it's just that this is what we have achieved in, in using them and, and we have the experience now. 
And but at the same time, the experiential learning and onboard training will continue to remain important for the future. And also before deciding about what's the future model, I think we need to be able to discuss the competencies for the future. And I picked up a few over because this can be a topic for a whole day conference just on this topic. So one of the main things that they would need to do is to be able to manage change because in the next two years, more will change than what changed in the last 20 years in terms of how ships are run. We are looking at alternative fuels coming in pretty quickly, LNG fuel ships, LPG fuel ships, methanol fuel ships, hydrogen, and maybe even nuclear in the future. We are looking at navigation changing completely with uh, softwares like the Watsila FOSS, which we use, uh, whereby a lot of the information is bundled together and comes up and things like passage planning, which it used to take a second office at 12 hours, now takes 60 minutes to do that. Uh, so the seafarers will need to be able to manage the change and that's this competency that they will all require they will be needing to be able to focus on critical issues because if anyone sees the alarm screen of uh, when something goes wrong on a ship today, uh, that screen just kind of keeps running with red and green lines and finding out the faults is now more of understanding the data on board uh, rather than touching and feeling machinery or listening for abnormal noises from the machinery. If you have to listen to abnormal noises, now it would be through a stethoscope probably and through vibration analysis of machines rather than actually going and touching and feeling the machinery. And there is something called alarm fatigue that is already occurring that the tendency then would be to repose alarms rather than take care of them. So that competency to be able to recognize what is critical alarm, what is a general alarm, how to be able to handle is an important one. Uh, ability to work with remote teams is gonna be important because a lot of decision-making is gonna be jointly with the VTS in case of navigation or with the company uh, remote support 24 hour station that many companies like us now already have. And those kind of uh, decisions with all the machinery data coming ashore on a dashboard of the vessel manager will bring in, will need to bring in joint decision making with the ship staff. So the ship staff is not left on their own now. There will be a lot of discussions with the shore office. Uh, ability to learn continuously, I mentioned that. Ability to cope with increased stress. Yes, the world is changing fast and fast change brings about more stress. And two of the human performance skills, ability to communicate effectively and ability to be a leader because more and more technology will take care of the machinery, but to be able to manage things is going to become more important. And communication, which is the fundamental, uh, I think foundation of all human mankind interaction will need to be even more important in the future. Uh, recognizing limitations and dangers of automation, because when you have uh, someone sitting in front of a machinery that is working perfectly and just once in, you know, the mean time between failures is reducing, engine overalls are changed from 16,000 hours to 32,000 hours now. And for people to be able to suddenly, you know, get out of that automation and take emergency actions is something that we will need to train people for. They will need to be able to process very large amounts of data, like I mentioned on the screen, and the ability to just take the data and recognize the patterns and convert it into intelligence and to be able to make decisions out of it is what the future seafarer and the future vessel manager will need to learn uh, very soon. Uh, coming back to the importance of, you know, how do we achieve competency? We all are familiar with the three pillars of having, making people competent is the knowledge, the skill, and most importantly, the attitude towards work. So I think 
what is going to happen in the future is that the knowledge learning platforms are going to change. Uh, we will move away from classroom and we will have things like virtual reality. This is something from again from my company. So we could not take the young seafarers anymore to visit ships, especially in the last two years with COVID, et cetera, and with the changing security regulations. So we converted walking into the four peak tank into virtual reality program. And now they get familiar pretty much in a different environment. But before they go out to sea, they have been through, walked through tanks, uh, done starting stopping of machinery in virtual reality. Um, they have learned welding with an augmented reality simulator, which is able to measure uh, how well the person is welding. And there is a whole lot of stuff that is happening in this world with respect to this uh, change in the way we are teaching people. Gaming, I think this particular thing has been underutilized in shipping. This is one of the programs that we have on how to identify defects and make, uh, it's almost like making each of our seafarers at the same level of a PSC inspector and all through the medium of uh, gaming. And the young people will know what I'm talking about when we say swipe right and swipe left. And that's now been brought in into the world of teaching because we have the young people's habits of deciding things by swiping right or left into a game. And they are learning their trade craft through something similar. And what is also going to happen a lot more is uh, micro learning, uh, short videos rather than 40 minute videos uh, because the span of attention as I'd mentioned earlier is reducing. And hence we need to adapt the way we teach people by bringing down the learning also into smaller bite-sized learning uh, rather than having long lectures and 45 minute uh, classroom periods. Uh, the skill learning platforms, the simulators have been around for 25 years, but the cost of them is reducing by the day and the quality of the simulations is increasing day by day. The graphics are better. Being able to simulate faults is becoming better. And so I believe that this medium will continue to grow in the hybrid model of the future. But now the important part of, with respect to hands-on training. Uh, yes, these are pictures again from our college in uh, Mumbai. We have a full-scale model of a tanker with four tanks and all the pumps and all the fittings of a tanker to try and replicate what they would learn on a ship because the time available on the ship is reducing. Uh, especially on ships like chemical tankers where the turnaround time is very small, voyages are small. So we recreate the ship's equipment sometimes to scale, sometimes to a miniaturized scale. Uh, and we try to recreate these skill learning platforms ashore so that people are better prepared. And this needs to stay. Now, whether we have more sea time on board for learning this on board or whether we bring this into colleges in India, there is something called a ship and campus concept, which was started earlier uh, successfully, but maybe not long term successfully because it is capital intensive to keep changing to the modern equipment that ships will have uh, things like these framo pumps, etc. But this is an important part. And then the live models, I mean, some real equipment ashore and some replicas of the control systems that are there. So the engine control room from not a very modern ship, but maybe 10 years ago is what you see in the center. And what you see on the left hand side upper corner is a ME engine simulator, which is from the ME, from ME and company. And it's exactly the same kind of screens that they would have on the ship. So bringing these live models ashore will be an important part in the future. Coming to the third pillar, assessing attitude. I think this is where the real challenge is. And I think the future assessments will need to move away from paper exams and get more and more of assessments which are done in near live conditions. So in our case, we use um, competency checks are done 
by actually operating the equipment that we have in the college. And this brings a directly transferable skill from the college to the ship because they have worked on similar equipment either in virtual reality or on live models before they go on the ship. Uh, this is importance of the behavioral competencies has been recognized in the industry. And this is from the Intertanko uh, together with OCIMF has published a book on behavioral competencies where there are six domains that we have focused on team working, communicating, situational awareness, decision-making, result focus, and leadership skills. This is also part of the 1.30 IMO model course, which together with Global Met, we have revised for IMO. And this is something that the tanker industry is certainly focusing a lot on improving, and it is coming in into across the industry, the importance of, of human performance skills. Uh, one critical part in the future competencies and future learning and future um, education, I think, is mentoring because this, the time available on board is becoming lesser and lesser. And hence, the ability for the master and chief engineer to mentor their young fellows is going to be lesser. So what we have found as a solution is an online uh, thing that works on uh, the, in, the seafarers personal mobile phone and hence they are able to choose mentors for different subjects from within the company uh, and they are able to interact with mentors ashore uh, which then or that could be captains who have with whom they have sailed before and they can be in touch with so a mentoring platform in the electronic age now a quick comparison between the old ways of doing things and the modern hybrid model. There is no doubt that the hybrid model of or e-learning or online learning or um, does have certain benefits. It can be recorded, archived, played back. It can be updated more easily. It saves a lot of money and that's one of the attractions to the level of all companies are looking at it so that they don't spend time and airfares and hotel accommodation. So hence, it's a good thing to share with that. You can allow a lot more people in the same forum. Uh, and when it's like a little bit of just knowledge sharing, uh, for example, there's an incident in the fleet and you want every seafarer within the fleet to know it. Uh, it's a great medium because we've run things with five, 600 people on at the same time uh, in a webinar run by the company and which we could never have done without the use of modern tools like WebEx, Zoom, et cetera. And it allows students to study at any time, at any place. However, there is a lot of things which were better in the old style of teaching, which should not be thrown away. Uh, the transformational power of teachers, I think all of us will remember some teacher in school or in university or out at sea, people who inspired us to do better in life. And I'll go a bit faster if I'm running out of time, Kirtan. Um, yes, sir. Yeah. So transformational power of teachers goes missing when we go everything online. There is an element of social bonding that takes place when you bring students from different fleets onto into a classroom within the company training center, or even between different companies in a, in a normal commercial training center. When they interact with people from other companies, there is a bit of peer-to-peer -peer learning and social bonding that takes place, which is difficult to replicate in the online stuff as yet. I know that there are ways of doing it. And there is no personalization because in a classroom, quite often the teacher understands that a learning style of a particular student is different and he's able to adapt immediately, which is not possible in the online stuff. Uh, it, online learning requires a lot of self-discipline because I could switch off my camera and go for a coffee while the teacher is kind of going on. So that's something that has been recognized in the two years of COVID that we've been doing online training and there is a lack of input and flexibility from the trainers so i believe the hybrid model yes 
there is no doubt that technology will be used gaming apps augmented reality virtual reality everything will increase but we all need to be careful about it that we do not give up because the new model of online training is cheaper uh, without the airfares etc but that we do not completely throw away and i would say that the choice of how we teach should be based on the desired learning outcome and certain things require more peer to peer learning certain things require more interaction and the teacher is only acting as a facilitator and for those things we still need to keep our brick and mortar classrooms alive uh, maybe lesser number of them maybe less often but we cannot completely move away to a uh, online world so a hybrid model yes with all the caveats that we mentioned that's all that i have to say in my presentation <coughs> i guess it was 10 or 12 minutes were allowed so i'll stop sharing my screen now thank you thank you so much thank you so much sir for an outstanding presentation yes the number of uh, women seafarers is 1.2% and the same has to be increased globally and that could be done uh, by bringing all the stakeholders together and it's glad to know that uh, anglo eastern has implemented vr and ar in their pre sea training right from walking into enclosed spaces to uh, learning how to weld uh, the day is not far away when uh, all the new machineries will be taught only on uh, virtual reality or augmented reality your just commitment to, and vision sorry just i want to add one point which i missed out that yes, we will be able to increase the number of women seafarers because very soon part of the seafarers are going to be in control rooms ashore in the semi autonomous world and the autonomous world so the family pressure that they have on not to go out to sea in a male dominated industry will kind of go away because they will be seafarers they might have to do some part of their training out at sea but after that they are much more suited to be able to uh, manage these control rooms and possibly like drone operators control ships uh, from ashore or to advise ships from ashore and their qualities that are generally innate we all look at mothers for being compassionate kind patient etc those qualities will very much be required by the teams who are directing the teams on board so i think the world is opening up for women seafarers a lot due to this thank you sorry for that additional time thank you sir very very rightly said uh, our last speaker for the session is mr bart de young the consulate general kingdom of netherlands mr bart would be highlighting on the challenges and opportunities that technological developments pose on the maritime sector and to the maritime education including the position of women in that development the floor is yours sir thank you uh, kishan um do you have a hard stop at uh, at three o'clock in eight minutes? Yes, sir. I've anyways yes. requested for a permission, but <laughs> okay, three no eight minutes is what we have. I'll, I will I will uh, skip part of of my presentation. Um, uh, to give my uh, uh, my background, um, I'm I'm consul general of the Netherlands in uh, in Mumbai. And uh, last year, we uh, commissioned a study on uh, the importance of gender diversity within the maritime sector. We did that in cooperation with uh, CEO. That's why I'm here at this conference. It's the second time I participate. And uh, we did uh, commission that study for various reasons. Uh, in the first place, of course, because we are a very uh, strong advocate of uh, gender equality, one of the United Nations uh, Sustainable Development Goals. Another reason why we supported the study is uh, that uh, women's participation in the maritime sector is low. It's way lower than men's, and that goes uh, for the Netherlands, but also for India. Um, at one end of the spectrum, only one third of entrepreneurs in the Netherlands are women, and that probably is even way lower in the maritime sector. But when it comes to seafarers, uh, we only count 2% uh, women. And uh, the reasons for that were uh, aptly uh, uh, mentioned by Captain uh, Chola, I think. Um, thirdly, you commissioned the study because the maritime sector in the Netherlands is very important to our economy. Uh, Rotterdam is considered to be uh, Europe's maritime capital, and we host a full spectrum of maritime industries and services from logistics, offshore operations, shipbuilding, maintenance, but also maritime technology and finance. 
But as was also demonstrated or pointed out already, it's very difficult to attract young people to work in the maritime sector nowadays. And in our country, there is a particular problem because uh, at present, the unemployment rate in the Netherlands is at a historic low. It's around 3%. And basically, it's perceived that 4% is a normal unemployment rate that makes the economy tick. So we, we really have a pressure on the labor market. So tapping into the reservoir of uh, potential female maritime professionals could also help to ease that shortage. Um, now, the study we commissioned, but also conferences like yours, are important to help realize this inclusiveness. But also, technological developments like digitization and automation might be on our side. As was uh, pointed out earlier by previous speakers, the IT sector experienced a revolution due to the uh, COVID uh, pandemic. And we ourselves, we recently uh, organized a, a seminar on ports digitization in which we discussed the tremendous opportunities that uh, uh, digitization in the maritime sector offers, but also the challenges that it poses. The introduction of new te uh, technologies is, of course, always very disruptive. Um, of course, they can have an adverse impact uh, on jobs within the sector, or as I just said, for some countries, that is a lesser uh, problem than for others. But uh, a disruption of the industry may also occur when different partners in the chain are not developing at the same speed. Now, in order to minimize, minimize disruption, we need to enhance engagements between the key stakeholders across the value chain. So you can identify gaps between the advancement of digitization on the one hand and the available human capital on the other hand. And now these gaps can only be bridged with appropriate education, training and skill building. And that should focus on specific required new competencies uh, that are required for the jobs of tomorrow, of course, yeah. And I think that uh, Captain Scholler also um, referred to that. According to a Dutch maritime uh, uh, study, the skills required in the near future will be in the area of big data analytics, new energy technologies, the Internet of Things, the circular economy, cloud technologies, and artificial intelligence. Now, the future skills required for maritime jobs have to be balanced between soft and hard skills, according to that study. So soft skills like leadership, communication, critical thinking, creativity, that all remains vital. But hard skills like digital capabilities, problem solving, and numerical accuracy will be crucial in the years ahead. Now, for the adoption of new and emerging technologies amongst uh, all economic sectors, it is imperative to address challenges that digitization and automation pose. And maritime education needs to formulate effective strategies to that end. And yes, that could be uh, uh, in, in a hybrid model. I think that all speakers uh, uh, before me have demonstrated that. If there's one thing that the COVID crisis has learned us, it's that people all over the world are able to effectively communicate via online platforms and online uh, uh, seminars, webinars. But also, it has also learned us that physical contact, face-to-face -face contact is essential. And that's why a hybrid model, in our view, is the best model. Um, one interesting aspect of the newer areas of technologies is that they have the potential to create gender inclusive maritime job opportunities, notably because the number of physically hard jobs, demanding jobs in ports, but also on board, are diminishing through automation and digitization. And I think uh, Captain Chola also just uh, mentioned that uh, many onboard jobs can be done in the future onshore. From, from control rooms in headquarters of, uh, of, of shipping companies. So that's a very interesting development and that could also be conducive to getting more women uh, on board. Um, so I'd like to conclude by saying that the uh, digital transformation, it poses challenges, yes, but it also offers robust opportunities. There's a tremendous potential to explore the previously unexplored areas, including the potential to attract more women in the sector. And with that, we're one minute ahead of schedule. Thank you. Thank you so, so much, next. sir. And I'm sorry for uh, squeezing your time up. I, I, I understand you had a lot to uh, share also, but sorry for that. Uh, thank you all uh, the speakers for your excellent presentations. I'm sure it's been an enriching experience for all the 
uh, audience watching us from around the globe. There's also a speaker chat room wherein the speakers can interact with the participants and take their questions. Uh, thank you once again, uh, Dr. Cleopatra Dombia Henry, ma'am, uh, Captain Pradeep Chawla, sir, Dr. Sajid Hussain, sir, and uh, Mr. Bharti Yong, sir, for, on, uh, for uh, your presentations. Uh, it was indeed a pleasure and honor to have you with us. Uh, with this, uh, we have come to the end of the session. Thank you all for attending, and we hope all of you have learned and enjoyed the session. Please stay safe and take care. Thank you.